What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. This is Living in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today I'm out in the Redlands part of Grand Junction on the west end of the valley and we're going to talk about in this video why any place or anywhere in Grand Junction can wind up being your favorite place to live. We'll talk about it right after this, so stay tuned. What is going on everyone? I'm Robert Hayes and along with my wife Christy and the rest of the team, we are the Hayes Home Group right here in gorgeous Grand Junction, Colorado. Hey, if you're brand new to the channel and you just wanna know everything about what it's like to work, live, play, eat, sleep here in Grand Junction, then make sure you hit subscribe, tap the bell so you're notified every time we post a new video. If you are even thinking about heading out this way to Grand Junction, we're getting so many reach outs from folks from all over the world looking to do the same. So the information popping up below, reach out any way that you know how. Give us a phone call, shoot us a text, send us that email. We've got your back with any questions that you might have and we definitely will crush your real estate goals days nights weekends right here in Grand Junction okay so like I said at the top we're here in the Redlands part of town soaring eagle is the name of this little enclave you've got right there the Colorado National Monument in the background there's probably going to be well I don't even want to speculate how many homes but it's a rather new subdivision it's not going to be like 900 homes or anything maybe oh i don't know got a gorgeous one right there in the background i'm gonna say 60 maybe 70 i could be way off but i mean it's not a lot but this little enclave is certainly going to be desirable for a lot of folks and that's what i wanted to get into why do some of our clients just latch on to a specific area not just here in the redlands but all across the grand valley well it comes down to a number of factors for these folks it might be the simple fact that they've got the gorgeous Colorado National Monument right there to the south. You've got views of the book cliffs off to the north. So gorgeous scenery and views certainly could be one of those main factors for these folks moving out here to the Redlands with these gorgeous views. But it doesn't always happen that way. I'll just give you a personal story. Christy grew up in the Redlands. We actually lived just across the street from where she grew up as a little kid. And what it came down to is the fact that her dad also lives in the Redlands and we used to go to his place all the time still do for you know Christmas Thanksgiving all those sorts of things we'd walk out his front door and literally just down the street was a property that Christy just had her eyeballs on and he called her up one day and said hey Christy that house that you were looking at they're banging a for sale sign in the front yard well as realtors of course we were <laughs> we were there in like five minutes and she said this is it this is the one so from a familiarity standpoint having grown up in the Redlands I lived in the Redlands at the time pre Christy um, we just wound up latching on to the Redlands because of that familiarity and of course living close to you know her dad is certainly something that she wanted to do as well so, I mean, that's the reason why we're in the Redlands. Now, when you go out to Fruita, Colorado, it's definitely got that mountain biker, eclectic vibe, 11,000 people, Main Street's two blocks long, but you don't have to be a mountain biker to want to move into the Red, or to Fruita, I should say. We've got a couple of folks in Fruita just recently. One, Ted and Sue, he actually lived on a golf course in California. So he wanted to live in close proximity to a golf course and Fruita was one of those main Adobe Creek golf courses that we have here in the Grand Valley where you can get a property for way less than what you can get at Redlands Mesa Golf Course, which is gonna be, you know, 900 grand. Theirs was something in the range of the mid threes. He got himself a little golf cart. He's going to the golf course all the time, just taking his golf, golf cart right over there. So that's what they wanted as far as a lifestyle and wound up finding that in Fruita. What about Kelsey and Jason, a couple of kiddos? They're uh, obviously in Fruita as well, and they just wanted those, those highly regarded 
guarded schools in the Fruta area. And so they came out from the Pacific Northwest, found a gorgeous property there in Orchard Ridge in Fruta, and that's why they wound up picking Fruta as the place and destination for them. Now what about the north part of Grand Junction? Highly desirable, got plenty of clients that are moving out to the north part of town. Close proximity to everything that you could possibly want, the hospitals, the big box stores, all those shops lining Patterson Road, bars, restaurants, brew pubs. So that's certainly a draw for a lot of folks to move into the north. Well, we're closing next week for Kylie and Brock. They latched on to us probably a year ago and we've been having that dialogue ever since. Well, guess what? They found a property in Silver Spur, actually the second client that we've got into the Silver Spur subdivision, is within probably 80 yards to Appleton Elementary School. They've got a couple of kiddos. That was really important to them. So as far as getting into a certain area for them, it was all about access to the elementary school with the young kiddos that are that elementary school age. So they liked the fact that the kids could just leave the house, walk down the street. They got a little crosswalk with a crossing guard. I remember that as a kid. So that was super important to them. Another highly desirable elementary school there in the north part of town. So for Kylie and Brock, that was the main consideration for them. It wasn't viewed of the National Monument. It wasn't, you know, the views of the book cliff in the valley below. It was that familiarity of what they were coming from and wanted that same familiarity in the north part of town. Oh, by the way, did you guys notice these gorgeous blue skies here in mid-September? Fall is in the air. I think I did a temperature check on my phone. It's nothing but suns all the way down for the next 10 or uh, 10 or 12 days whatever it is got highs in the mid to upper 70s cool overnights it's just the absolute perfect weather here in Grand Junction well let's go ahead and let's talk about the Redlands since we're here in the Redlands do you have to be at 800 grand even though the median home price in the Redlands is about 600 good morning how are you how are you? Good, thank you. Just dog walkers, typical stuff here in the Redlands or anywhere in Grand Junction on this gorgeous morning. So, no, you don't have to pay $950, a million bucks to be in the Redlands. What about Cody and Emily? He transferred from California. His job gave him a few different locations to look at, and he settled on Grand Junction. But guess what? He got into the Redlands area, the ridges specifically, and paid about $410 for a 1970, I want to say it was 1973. Um, it had, you know, the green shag carpet, popcorn ceiling, you know, the Brady Bunch colors. For those of you old enough to remember that reference, the Brady Bunch. And they just knew that that was the dream home. She was not an interior designer, but I told her she absolutely should be. Let me show you a couple uh, photos of what they did to this property. And then unfortunately, he wound up having to transfer yet again to Indiana. They wound up making a boatload on that remodel that they did here in the Redlands. Again, only paid about 410 grand to get it. What about the northeast part of town? Well, it's super desirable, number one, because of the affordability. I think it's uh, number two, the second or third lowest median home price at about 369 there in the northeast part of town. Well, John and Lisa reached out to us, and what they really loved about the northeast, specifically a neighborhood called Cottage Meadows, was the fact that the home style exterior really reminded them of the actual northeast United States. It it was a home that they had uh, had for, for years, and just that exterior look really was a draw for them. So again, guys, it comes down to really familiarity. Sure, views are nice, but anywhere in the valley that you're gonna reside, I mean, you know, it's only 15 miles east-west in the valley, eight miles north-south. You're gonna, whether it's driving to work or just driving to Sam's Club or wherever you're gonna go, you're gonna get these views, might not be off your front porch, 
but that's not going to be the number one reason why you're going to move to a specific area which we've talked about before the area is what you want to hone down not the house i know zillow realtor.com looking at those cool photos that's fun but find the area first that familiarity then finding the home becomes uh, super easy at that point so what about orchard mesa we just got rick and nora into spyglass ridge up there in orchard mesa down south and they're you know looking for some of that you know that view that you can get out in spyglass ridge but again the familiarity of what they had in texas and the subdivision that they lived in reminded them of that in spyglass ridge so for him it was about that outdoor lifestyle he could leave the house there's trails right down behind the house biking trails he's a big mountain biker and uh, he hikes all that good stuff goes on the river close proximity to the river so again not to beat a dead horse here but it was the familiarity for rick and nora as to why they wound up in spyglass ridge over there in orchard mesa and then last but not least you've got dave and karen they came out here from new mexico they lived in a pretty rural setting in new mexico and for them it was you know kind of a little too rural they had to go you know probably about 45 minutes to an hour to really get to any sort of civilization so they relocated here to grand junction and they really honed in on the southeast part of town it had that familiarity of being kind of more of a rural setting you're not right next to you know a bunch of homes uh, at least the, you know there's some subdivisions where you can have that feel but they liked again that exterior look of the house that they wound up landing on and then that feel of the southeast just a little more breathing room a little more space uh, versus let's say the northeast which is a little more dense than the southeast or orchard mesa or or, you know out even in the northwest of Grand Junction so that's why they wound up landing in the southeast part of town familiarity what's the most important is there something that maybe you grew up with that reminds you of that and that's why you land on a certain area so anywhere any place any area in Grand Junction can wind up being your favorite place to live so again guys as much as we love doing these darn videos we'd love nothing more than to absolutely crush your real estate goals when heading out this way so the information popping back up below reach out any way that you know how give us a phone call shoot us a text send us that email we've got your back days nights weekends when heading down here to grand junction yeah i know i forgot the carrier pigeon send the carrier pigeon we've got your back days nights weekends again when moving here to grand junction until the next video we'll catch you later